רוצים לבדוק מה קורה במדינות שבהן אפשר לומר שכבר חצו את הגל הזה, גם בריטניה וגם דרום אפריקה. איתנו דוקטור אליס פרידמן, שהוא בבריטניה, ודוקטור דניאל ישראל, שהוא נמצא בדרום אפריקה. Good morning. 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 Good to see you. Well, you are the happy ones, right? Dr. Friedman. Yes, things are improving in the UK. Yes. Okay, please tell us about it. Tell us how, how, how the figures look like today in Britain. So the case numbers are now dropping. So we're now below 100,000 a day. The hospitalizations are also beginning to fall. But as expected, we haven't yet seen any fall in the numbers of deaths per day. But that's what would be expected in the next couple of weeks. Are we talking about a, 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 um, a big drop? It's, it's uh, something massive? The numbers are, are, are dropping massively? Yes, the, the, the numbers are dropping quite rapidly. And um, I, I think that's what most of us expected, uh, given the experience we saw from what happened in South Africa. So, um, clearly, the, the numbers have been dropping for the last few days. We have been at a weekend, and so the figures might not be absolutely reliable because our weekend figures aren't so accurate. Mm -hmm. But I would anticipate that we will be, on average, below 100,000 cases per day by next week. That's unbelievable. How many weeks do you count uh, for this wave? I mean, how many weeks do you think the wave was in Britain? Well, we've had the wave in, in, in this country for about six weeks. Um, I would expect that we will still have quite high levels till mid-February. It's then a little bit more difficult to forecast as to what levels the Omicron will drop to. But clearly, this is an encouraging uh, development. And the anticipation is that most of the restrictions placed on the public... will end perhaps in two weeks' time, perhaps with the exception of mask wearing. Fantastic. So, very good news coming from Britain. Uh, Dr. Israel, um, you are in South Africa, and you were the first to, to feel the wave. How, how many weeks did it last? So, the wave started at the end of November, and we're now on the begin, middle of January. So, it's about six or seven weeks so far. Um, But, and again, in South Africa also, cases are down. Uh, the last 24-hour reporting cycle has been about 4,500 cases, and you've got to contrast that with 25,000 or so at the peak. Now, I know that in Israel there are more, there are higher cases, even in a much smaller population. But this, also remember, this has coincided with our summer holidays, and a lot of people do not test yeah. um, over this time. But the good news is that the morbidity and the mortality of this, of this wave has been much, much less than the others. In fact, there was some data out last week showing that Omicron has been 5% of, of the COVID deaths so far, and Delta was 50%. So, and certainly from an on-the-grounds perspective, we are not, as, a, as an on-the-grounds doctor, we are not having to admit people uh, much to hospital. Partly because of vaccination, we do have much lower vaccination rates than obviously you do in Israel. Yeah. But also, we really believe because of the Omicron itself. But it's so, so interesting because the, the actual figures show us that this wave is less lethal than, than the others. That, that's for sure. So the wave seems to be lasting shorter. It seems to mm. be much more contagious. But the morbidity and mortality, as I said, is less. Yeah. However, we are starting to see what we think is reinfection, which is something interesting because we have, I certainly in my practice, we Re have about Reinfection with Omicron twice in the same way? Well, well, it's people who, remember in South Africa, the cases were exceptionally low before Omicron. There was hardly any cases a week that were coming through, certainly in our, in our Johannesburg practices. And then in the end of November and early December, a lot of people got started getting COVID at the same time that Omicron was detected. So it was presumed to be Omicron. And now we've had a few cases where six weeks later, after the person recovered, they've got it again. 
Wow. So we don't know for sure about that, but certainly the data does show that there might be possibility of reinfection. But we must remember that even if there is reinfection, if the clinical manifestation of the disease is much less, then it might not matter. This might yeah. be our way of turning COVID into a cold or a flu. Exactly. And this is my last question, Dr. Friedman. As an epidemiologist, right? Uh, mm. Can you... How should I put it? Can you declare that this is the end of the, of the pandemic? Well, at some stage, we're going to move from a pandemic phase into an endemic phase. Uh, and we'll have to learn to live with COVID. COVID is always going to be with us as an infection. There's no precise definition as to when that will happen. And I suspect it will probably be WHO that will call it. I think if we continue with Omicron as the dominant wave, um, then I think there is every chance that we will move to an endemic phase in Israel and in the UK in the not too distant future. The worry always is that we're going to get a worse variant occurring. So, you know, although I'm optimistic, it is with some caution as to what the future might bring. Exactly. All right. I want to thank you so much for being with us from South Africa and from Britain and to wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you for thank the you. good news, of course.